memberships. You probably have more of them than you even realize. Netflix, Costco, Disney Plus, your gym, maybe your meal delivery service, your socks, Amazon Prime, the Dollar Shave Club. Heck, even your software is probably all a subscription. Gone are the days of buying Microsoft Word once. All of that is converted to a monthly subscription. As a consumer, I know you're no stranger to memberships. And there's also a reason why most financial gurus tell you to check your subscriptions first. Because they're sticky. Once you're in, if they're working for you and making your life easier, whether it's with free same-day shipping or having The Little Mermaid on demand, you're extremely likely to stick around, to be a member, and continue paying. Now let's think about the flip side of this for a moment, like the other way around. How awesome would it be to have people paying you and customers coming back to you month after month after month? Yep, that is the power of a membership that you own. If you love the idea of less hustle, less of the launch pause, launch pause model, more impact, and more stability in your business, you are going to love this episode. Today's guest is Stu McLaren. Stu coaches and consults New York Times bestselling authors, top-rated speakers, experts, and niche celebrities on how to launch, grow, and scale highly profitable recurring revenue streams. As the former founder of the world's number one membership platform for WordPress, Wishlist Member, he had the chance to serve and support over 60,000 online communities and membership sites. Through that experience, you better believe Stu gained a unique insight into the subtle membership nuances that help produce massive results. Today, he uses that knowledge to help his clients to launch and grow multiple high six- and seven-figure membership sites and shares the same blueprints through his course, Tribe. And he's with us here today to share it on Golden Girls Podcast. Now, Stu is an absolute genius when it comes to marketing and specifically helping business owners create recurring revenue in their businesses. I mean, hello, he's helped everyone from Michael Hyatt, New York Times bestselling author, all the way to yours truly. So if you're wondering, yep, the whole concept and idea and the creation of Golden Girls Community came from what I learned with Stu. In full transparency, I am a proud partner and affiliate for Stu's course called Tribe, which we're going to touch on in this episode. But whether or not you join Tribe, I know you're going to take a lot from this episode and Stu's free upcoming workshop. You might be thinking some of the same things I did before I thought about doing a membership. You might be thinking, but I have no idea where to even start. Or maybe you're worried because you don't have a very big list or following. Maybe you're worried about failing and wondering what happens if nobody joins. Or maybe you're worried about being on a constant content hamster wheel, wondering what do I do? What do I deliver month after month? Don't worry, we're going to answer all those and more in this episode. Chances are, if you're listening this far, you want to create more income. You don't always want to be chasing the next contract or client. You want more freedom and ease in your life and your business. I can tell you personally that adding a membership to my business was one of the best things I ever did. And at the end of this episode, I'm sharing some of my personal lessons and tips for growing a membership site. But you don't just have to hear from me. Today, I'm talking to Stu and trust him because he has helped thousands of membership site owners. So if you like the sound of recurring revenue, if you love the sound of creating stability, more impact, and more wealth in your life and business, listen up. By the end of this episode, you'll hear how and why memberships are taking the world by storm. And most of all, why you should pay attention. Even if you don't have a big list, you're going to hear that it's possible for you too to have a thriving membership and subscription business. And you're going to feel inspired hearing Stu's story, knowing that the more money you make, the bigger impact you can have in your life, the life of your clients, your family, and beyond. Listen in. This episode is such a treat. I hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Golden Girls Podcast, where we believe you can have it all. I'm your host, Lisa Michaud, and I'm spilling tangible tips, goal-getting strategies, and real-life stories to inspire you to tackle your biggest dreams. You're a woman who knows you're made for more. Get ready to leave the excuses and self-doubt behind by being vulnerable, sharing your truth, and having honest conversations so you can succeed on your terms. Together, we'll set goals you'll actually achieve by staying motivated, having fun, and building a community of women empowering women. It's time to tap into your best self, get confident, and truly have it all. Golden Girl, let's dive in. Stu, thank you so much for being here. I got to tell you, the last time I saw you, we were playing bubble soccer. I'm pretty sure you kicked my butt in Tribe Live in Toronto. 
And two years later, I think the word bubble has seriously different meanings. Um, yes. But it's great to have you here. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you so much. I wish, I wish we could get back to some bubble soccer. That was like, you know, some of the most fun ever. I know it was a really good time. For those of you guys that don't know what that is, go Google it and find somewhere near you. It, it's a good time. Yeah. Um, so Stu, I know a lot of people know about the, the successes that you've had, the amazing ways that you've helped other entrepreneurs. But I want to talk to you a little bit more about you, the human behind the business, behind the brand. So can you share a little bit about yourself, uh, maybe your family, some of the things that you're passionate about? Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I've been married to my beautiful and amazing wife, uh, Amy. We're coming up on uh, 14 years. Uh, we have two kids. Um, my daughter, Marla, who actually turns 10 this upcoming weekend, which is craziness, double digits. Ah! And then uh, my son, Sam, who we adopted from South Africa. Uh, he turned seven earlier this year and is just a ham and just an absolute uh, treasure and treat. So yes, we're a, a small tight knit family and um, my passions, I love getting outside. Like for me, you know, uh, this passion has probably grown more and more over the last five years, but I love being outside, running on the trails, biking on the trails, skiing, and just, uh, you know, just soaking up nature. And nature, uh, I really came to be aware of that it fuels me. Um, I love competition. Uh, I used to play soccer at a high level at university. We won two national championships. So I love, I love sports. I love, you know, staying fit and I love uh, competition around that. Just got a you know, our, our Peloton this past weekend when there was a big Peloton competition, I was like, this is amazing. So, um, <laughs> I love the Peloton and, uh, you know, love staying in shape, but, um, and then I, you know, Amy and I, my wife and I, we just, we love creating experiences, uh, for ourselves. We love creating experiences for our kids, for friends, for family, for our uh, clients and customers. And, um, and that's to me a lot of fun because experiences lead to memories and, you know, at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's why we do what we do. And then the final thing that I would say is that uh, I'm really passionate about using business for good. You know, I've been inspired by a number of mentors and, and uh, people that I looked up to. And in fact, I just read an article um, about uh, somebody that had huge influence on me. I don't know him personally. Um, but if uh, anybody wants to see the backstory, I, I recommend they go and uh, search YouTube for the video called The Secret Billionaire. And it's of a gentleman by the name of Chuck Feeney. And probably nobody knows who that is because he, you know, is a behind the scenes guy. But he's a billionaire that made, you know, billions and billions of dollars because he was the founder of, you know, the duty free air, uh, like the airport duty free shops. He made billions of dollars. He felt ridiculously guilty about it. And so he ended up like, just, you know, secretly giving away all of his money. And his goal was to, uh, was to die broke, to give it all away. And I just read an article that uh, he accomplished that goal in giving away all of his money. Uh, he gave away more than $8 billion. And um, I just think of like all the, the people that have benefited from this man's genius. And that inspires the heck out of me. And so uh, we love to give, my wife and I, we started our own nonprofit back in 2009. And since then, we've built 14 schools, educating 5,000 plus kids. And that's a real passion of mine is to use business and make money uh, for good. And so that's another big thing that, um, you know, is on my passion list, so to speak. Oh my gosh, you touched on so many good things. I feel like we could talk an episode on like all of those. Um, you know, I think what you, one of the things you just touched on, I think is really, it resonates for me. And I know it's going to resonate a lot for our listeners. And that's the idea of feeling guilty about making money. Mm. I think that's something, you know, it comes up a lot. Like I, I, who, who do I think, who do I think I am to have more? What are other people going to think? Fear of, fear of failure and fear of success around money. And I'm wondering, like, I mean, obviously the undercover or no, sorry, not undercover. The secret billionaire is someone that inspired you, but what are you open to sharing a little bit more about your journey from money? Because I'm assuming you didn't grow up thinking money's amazing. I can't wait to make as much as I can. No, not at all. It's the complete opposite. Like, um, money was always a challenge in, for my family growing up. Uh, and it, it wasn't because, you know, my uh, parents made silly decisions or anything of that nature. No, like my, my parents, they, they just worked hard. Like, you know, I come from a blue collar background, you know, my, my dad, he worked, um, from nine in the morning till three in the afternoon at a school 
high school with kids with special needs. And then he would work uh, an evening job from eight at night till eight in the morning, four nights a week, again, in a group home with people with special needs. And my mom was the same. She worked in an elementary school from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. with kids with autism. And then the three nights that my dad wasn't uh, working, she was working in a fine dining restaurant. So my just my parents worked a lot. Um, and it was, you know, they uh, scrape, we scrape by with, you know, everything. Uh, but they, they were always there for me as like, you know, they were at every soccer game and basketball game and tremendously supportive parents. But when I reached probably the age of 12, I realized that nobody works harder than my parents. And yet we weren't the most financially successful uh, as a family. So I started to ask questions like, well, what gives? Like, why are some people so much more wealthy than others when I know they don't outwork my parents? Like nobody outworks my parents. Like what gives? That I think began to open me up to um, some ideas that eventually led me to becoming an entrepreneur. And then when I did become an entrepreneur and I experienced some success early on, I started to feel really guilty about it. Like when I was in my mid twenties, this is so weird to go back and think about. I'm in my mid twenties and I had moved back in with my parents. So I'm living in my parents' basement. And, and yet my business at the time, I was earning twice as much as my parents combined. And, and I felt really guilty about that because I certainly wasn't working as hard as my parents. And, 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 um, and yet I was earning a heck of a lot more. And eventually what I realized was that I, I held and harbored a lot of guilt around money. Um, and it wasn't until my wife and I went to Kenya for the first time and we were looking to build our very first school. And this was all initiated by my wife. My wife's amazing. She's always had a vision for being able to help you know people in a bigger, better way. And she always said to me, she's like, You'll never really understand what it means to give and the impact that that giving can have until you go and see the people that you're giving it to. And so when we were in Kenya for the first time and the idea of building a school uh, was bubbling around in our minds, we were meeting with this community where we were looking to potentially build this school. And I don't know anything about building schools. I don't know what it costs. I don't know what it's involved or I don't know none of that stuff. So I'm asking like a ton of questions and I'm, I'm talking to the chairman of this community and I just said like, you know, how much does this cost? How much does that cost? And I said, how much would it cost to fund the full-time salary of a teacher? And he he stopped for a moment and he thought about it. And he's like, it's roughly about a hundred dollars a month. And, and at the time, like I had a software company and we were selling a single license of our software for a hundred dollars. And I made this connection. I was like, well, wait a minute. Like if I sell one more license of the software and I just allocate that to funding the full-time salary of a teacher. Like imagine the impact that could have on, on, on the, all those kids that could learn. And then like the real light bulb went off, which was like, well, wait a minute. Like, what if I make a whole lot more money and I allocate a whole lot more to the people and causes that I'm passionate about? Imagine the impact I could have then. And that's when it flipped for me. That's when, you know, it went from making money being a very selfish endeavor and feeling guilty about it to making money becoming a very honorable endeavor, something where I could have a heck of a lot more impact and use what I'm good at to uh, help a whole lot of people. And so from that moment forward, like, I mean, I love making money. Like making money is amazing because when you have it, now you can do so much more good with it. But if you don't have it, It's very hard to do good with it. Like you're limited. Like you can only do so much. You can only donate so much time and only give so much time. We only have 24 hours in a day, right? But with money, there's so much more leverage. You can do so much more and have so much more impact. So I love making money. For the record, I love making money because money, more money helps us uh, be able to do more good in the world. Oh my gosh. So good. So that must be a part of how you define success then is, is how much of an impact you can have. How else would you define success for yourself and for your family? I think success 100% uh, percent is, you know, about uh, impact and, you know, long-term, like my wife and I, we have a plan for how we're going to inverse tithing, so to speak. You know, typically tithing is like where you keep 90% of what you make and you give 10%. 
We want to do the opposite. Like we, we want to live on 10% and give away 90%, but that doesn't mean we want to sacrifice all the things that we want to do in life, right? Like, let's just say for simple math that the perfect lifestyle for us means that we need a million dollars a year to, to do all the things that we want to do. Okay. And that just means that we need to make $10 million a year to, to be able to, you know, you know, flip tithing, so to speak. So we're not there yet, but we have a plan for how we're getting there. And each year we get a little and a, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more close. So the impact is really important to us. And it's not just like what we're doing with the charity, but that's also like the impact that we can have on friends and family. Like every year, Amy and I do what we call a super surprise. And it's like where we create an experience for someone we love. Sometimes it's family, sometimes it's close friends that they could never, ever, you know, do for themselves. But we, you know, create this amazing experience and create this like uh, memory that will be with them for a lifetime. Like that, there's so much joy that comes from those kinds of things. Um, but you need money to do those kinds of things, right? Like, so that's that's on the personal side. On From a, an, another way in which we define success to me is about like the quality of time that you have with people. You know, um, for me, like with two young kids, I know that these years are are fleeting. Like, you know, uh, my friend um, Jim Shields, he kind of put it to me uh, many years ago that really just hit hit me right between the eyes. He said, Stu, on average, most of us essentially have uh, 18 summers with our kids, 18. So each one of those summers count, right? And, and it's a countdown. And I think about that, like with my daughter, like she's turning 10 this weekend. That's eight more summers. Oh my gosh. Does that put into perspective how important the time is with the kids during these years? So, you know, how I define success on that front is being able to have that flexibility, being able to have that freedom to be able to dedicate to the kids and to be able to create experiences together with the kids. And of course, uh, I, I, I'm saying is like with Amy and I, like this is always a, an Amy and I uh, thing. And so just having time freedom, you know, to be able to uh, be with the kids, be with Amy, to have those experiences together because these years are uh, a few and far between. And I just want to make sure I maximize them to really give them a foundation and to create a, a relationship with them that will last a lifetime. Okay. Well, I, I think we're all now, all the moms and dads listening are <laughs> counting down how many summers we've got left. And oh, that's, Stu, that's honestly one of the things that I really love about you and respect about you is that you speak about business and money, not from just the sake of like hustle more and more and more, which I think that's a lot of the narrative out there around mm-hmm around money and around business. And you really bring such like a real life human aspect to it. You bring the, the side that's like, well, money is a tool that allows me to do the other things. Mm. Um, and I mean, it, there's no wonder why that's your personality and you've been attracted to memberships because that's what memberships allow us to do is to create more flexibility, create more impact. So why are you so passionate about membership sites and why do you feel like all entrepreneurs need to know about them? Well, if this last year has taught us anything is that we just never know what's going to happen. And, um, and, and I think when the pandemic hit, you know, there was a lot of fear and uncertainty because it was like, okay, well, you know, how long is this going to, uh, you know, be this way? And, and, and what does that mean? And I think in the beginning, we were kind of hoping, okay, sure, we'll buckle down and we'll kind of, you know, uh, press pause on the way things normal are for, you know, a few weeks, maybe a, a month or so. And then when the weeks led to months and the months led to, you know, more than a plus a year, like where we are, we're going in another lockdown. Like it, things have spiked up again and none of us know what's going to happen. And during that time, my heart has absolutely broken for so many business owners who have poured blood, sweat, and tears and a whole lot of money into their businesses only to see it go sideways you know, was something that they had zero control over. Like I think of my uh, really close buddy of mine who was in my wedding party. He owns a restaurant. Well, <laughs> his whole world has been turned upside down because they're open and they're closed and they're open and they're closed. And like, you know, how can you survive a business? Like, like we have another friend of ours who owns a brewery, same thing. She, you know, has had to get super creative. And in that it's been super hard and difficult and, and uh, just to make ends meet. I think of all the retail shops, you know, 
Same thing. And I want, there was a heartbreaking story coming out of Toronto earlier this year, which was another restaurant that had been in this family for four or five generations. And, and they declared bankruptcy this year because they couldn't survive it. And I think of like the history and the legacy of that business, but because of what happened and that none of us saw it coming, they couldn't survive it. But then there's the other side of the coin. And that is the world of online digital memberships. And I have never been more proud, never been more proud of the way in which memberships have shown up for business owners this year. Because this hasn't been a year of survival for people with digital memberships. It's been a year of thriving. And like, I'll give you an example. So Casey Hope, she owns an art studio. People come into her studio. She teaches classes. She teaches adults. She teaches kids. She sent me a message and uh, right when the pandemic started. And she just said, Stu, I, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful that uh, we created a membership. She has a membership for teaching calligraphy. And she said, because that membership um, is not only going to keep us afloat, it's I'm still going to be able to pay all of our staff. I'm still going to be able to pay ourselves. And I don't have anywhere near the fear I would if it were just the art studio. And, and, uh, and then I got messages like Casey's from like Sarah Williams, who owns a retail shop. Same thing. She's like, thank the heavens for uh, the digital memberships. Or I received messages from a variety of our people in our community who own brick and mortar businesses, whether it's, uh, you know, art studios, whether it's retail shops, whether it's a chiropractic business, as an example, uh, doctors who are sending me messages, like all of these different businesses that have been turned upside down in the quote regular world, but the digital membership is what kept them not only surviving, but thriving. And then I saw the opportunity that arose as well, where people in our community who launched a second and a third membership because they saw the need. So coming back to Casey as an example, she has an art studio. A month after the pandemic hit, she saw an opportunity, which was like, oh my gosh, there are millions of parents who are now at home with their kids, not knowing what to do. And she's like, we help them. Like when they come into the art studio, we help them. We help them learn art and it's a great and she's like, why don't I just marry the two things together? I'll create a, a membership that teaches kids art. And that's exactly what she did. She launched a second membership. She's welcomed more than 500 plus members in that membership uh, since she launched it this year. And I'm sharing this with you because what a membership does is it creates predictability. It creates, you know, so that we know with certain certainty that those sales are going to be coming in each and every month. This is why I'm passionate about this because every single business owner should have recurring revenue in their business so that we can not only weather the storm, but so that we can thrive through that storm. And so I'm a little bit passionate about this because I see both sides of the story and I just, I really want it for entrepreneurs. We work way too hard. We pour way too much into our businesses uh, and we need that certainty and that predictability. And that's exactly what a membership provides. Oh my gosh. I love all of that. I always love your stories. And there's so many, I mean, well, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be sharing more of the story, some of the success stories from tribe. There's so many of them because it, it works and memberships do help so much. Um, I'm curious, some of the questions that came in from our audience, I always like to ask our audience, you know, what do you want to know? And that's one of the, one of the things you talk about a lot is like, there's benefits of being small. And that's one of the things I believe is such a benefit of being small, whether it's a membership or a podcast is you get to actually have these one-on-one -on -one conversations. So some of the questions that came in, I'm wondering if you can speak to them. Um, people that don't even know where to start with a the membership. They're like, yes, like this sounds so great. You know, we're all on board for more time, more freedom. Uh, we want to work less, all these things, less stress. But like, where do we actually start? How what does that look like? Well, um, what's interesting about memberships is we think we've got to have all the things figured out before we take the next step. And it's completely not true. Because unlike like a book, for example, you know, a book, we pour a ton of time and energy. We write the book. We edit the book. We, you know, uh, uh, print the book. We Sounds like experience in your household, perhaps. Yeah. I might be going through this right now uh, with my <laughs> with my wife's upcoming book. But like, there's a lot of things that go into the book. And then, like, the book gets put on the bookshelves. And imagine if you find something that you wish you could change, like a mistake. You can't go and take like all the books off the bookshelves. 
and then reprint them all and then go put them all back. Like it's kind of a done deal at that point. A membership is the complete opposite. A membership is something that you are constantly changing and tweaking based on the interaction with your members. So I, in all my years of doing this, you know, which is a decade plus helping tens of thousands, I have never ever seen a membership that is the exact same from the day that they launched, three months later, six months later, 12 months later. Like it, it just doesn't happen. And the reason is because once you start working with real people, you start identifying like, okay, well, where are people getting stuck? Oh, they're getting stuck here. Well, let's change that up. Let's tweak things here. Let's change the experience there. And so you're, uh, you're, you're making those changes, which is why getting going sooner rather than later is of the utmost importance because the reality of it is, is that you're going to learn more and you're going to progress faster by working with people. And in the beginning, especially, we think that the only way a membership is going to work is if we've got like hundreds or thousands of people that we can uh, offer it to. And so that we have hundreds or thousands of people that join right out of the gates. No, no, no. Listen, some of the biggest success stories that we've seen have been memberships that have started with 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 members. And then those memberships have blossomed a year, two years, three years later into memberships that have hundreds or thousands, or in some cases, tens of thousands. So they started real small and they used that as an opportunity to refine that experience and to uh, help their people because they are able to, on a much more intimate level, understand what's really going on and therefore tweak the experience and therefore generate uh, more and more stories of success, which become your number one marketing asset. So for me in the beginning, yes, if we can generate revenue from the founding member launch, amazing. I'm all for it. I will never, ever, you know, turn away revenue. But at the same time, the real intention and purpose of it is to have people that you can work with, to really craft that experience, which inevitably is going to help you attract more people. And it begins to compound from that point forward. And so Success with membership is the long game. And most importantly is to get started, to get out of our own way and to really work with a small group of people to make that happen. So good. So good. Yes, guys, everybody, FML. Did you get that? Just make sure you FML, founding member launch. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> okay. One of the things that I know you're good at is figuring out like, what do I do if people don't sign up? Like if no one shows up and I know you've handled a lot of failure in your career at and because you can't have success without failure, what would you say in those situations of failure or if nobody signs up, like what are some of your tips or even mindset thoughts that you have around that? Well, first things first. Okay. So you, you, you put it out there and nobody signs up. Good news is that you didn't put a whole lot of time, energy, and effort into spending, uh, you know, like, uh, let me just put this into perspective. I was talking to, um, oh gosh, her name's escaping me right now. Uh, Stephanie, that's her name, Stephanie. I was talking to Stephanie from our community who um, spent more than a year plus, you know, creating uh, all the behind the scenes of a membership. It was expensive. She eventually launched and it, and it failed. And then she did things the way in which we are talking about, which was just keeping it streamlined and bootstrap. She did a founding member launch. And uh, she welcomed, I think it was more than, I think it was like 68 members in her founding member launch. And it created a huge, like, you know, momentum for her. And, and at that point, she could invest that back into creating the membership and keeping it simple. So the reason I'm sharing this was it, she spent a ton of money and uh, more than four years and had made like $11,000 in total. And then she did it this way, super simple streamline. She made uh, more than uh, it was close to it was sixty uh, uh, close to seventy thousand dollars. Sorry, in in uh, o over the lifetime or not lifetime over the year of these members, and, and in five days, and she hadn't created anything from the get go. And so my point in sharing this is like we want as quickly as possible to you know a proof of concept. Like you know, are people drawn to this? And if they're not, then the good news is we didn't pour a whole lot of time, energy, and effort into it. So isn't that better to have that clarity? Uh, first, before we move forward, than it is to invest a whole bunch of time, energy, and money and not know if people are actually going to join. So it kind of brings me back to a quote from Nelson Mandela. And um, one of the quotes that I love from him is he said, you either win or you learn. 
And so let's say you put it out there and people respond. Amazing. That's a win. Move forward. Let's say you put it out there and nobody responds. Amazing. You've learned what not to do in that moment. You've learned what isn't resonating. And now you can begin investigating and unpacking that to identify like where, where are things falling apart? Is it that not enough people saw it? Is it that the, you know, not enough people were interested in it? And if they weren't interested, why? What was missing? Maybe you were saying one thing and they're wanting another. Or, you know what I mean? So like we begin, begin to unpack that. And along the way, if we just think of this as an experiment and we're just trying things and, and we're just putting a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and eventually we're going to find the, the mixture, so to speak, that, that works. And I'll give you an example. Um, there's a woman in our community, her name's Michelle Lloyd. And Michelle, she's an artist and she is teaching other artists how to grow a business around their art. For about a year and a half, almost two years, she launched her membership and she did get a little bit of traction, but it just felt like slow and heavy and sluggish. Like no matter what she tried, she never had like that quote breakthrough that she was hoping for. But she kept plodding along and kept doing it and kept doing all the right things. And she kept experimenting and trying different things. Then there was this promotion where she changed up the messaging a little bit. She took a different angle on it. And that messaging, it resonated with her audience. It hit. And that launch, it took off like crazy. And I'll never forget the message I got from her. It was a video of her in tears explaining to me how meaningful this moment was because when she was younger and she was in school, one of her school counselors told her that she should just come to the realization in fact that she should just go get a job in a supermarket stocking shelves because she has ADHD. And, and, and so the, the counselor said, look, it's okay. Like that, you know, you know, just, you know, be okay with the fact that that's the, you know, the kind of career and job that you, and, and that's always stayed with her. And so throughout this process, like when, when things, you know, weren't maybe clicking the way that she had hoped in the back of her mind, she's thinking like, I'm a failure. I'm a failure. That counselor was right. That counselor was right. But to her credit, she was, she didn't give up. Like this is an experiment. Like you just keep trying stuff. And eventually she found the right amount of ingredients that hit. And from that day forward, her business has skyrocketed. She's not added hundreds of members. She's now thousands of members. And after that launch, I remember writing her back and I said, my hope to you is that you still have the contact information of that school counselor. And you can go back to that school counselor and you can say, I don't know how many shelf stalkers are able to generate this amount of revenue in this period of time. Because that's the kind of thing that I want people to realize is not only can you do this, yes, but what that makes possible, like long-term with a membership, like it compounds. And so for Michelle, like it wasn't just that one launch. Yes, that was a huge success, but those are all people who are part of a membership. They're going to be there again the month after and the month after that and the month after that. And it compounds. And this is why her membership now has skyrocketed because she didn't give up. She was willing to experiment. She was willing to try. And in that, she was learning every step of the way about her market and what resonated with her market. And eventually she found that right uh, mixture and that's when everything took off. So all I would say is like, look, as much as I would love to give everybody a magic wand and we could all wave it and all of a sudden, whoo, we got an instant success. Yes, many times that is 100% gonna happen. We've seen it in all, you know, all, all the time. We see it every single day. But sometimes it's gonna take some experimenting. Sometimes it's gonna take some persistence. But I, what I can tell you is that you 100% can make it happen. And it 100% will happen as long as you don't give up on yourself along the way. Because that's the only way I know with certainty that it won't happen is if you give up and walk away. So we can figure this out. It can 100% happen. And I've seen it happen in every single market you can think of. Photography, calligraphy, fitness, finance, music, art, health, dog training, you name it. It's happened and it can happen, but you just can't give up on yourself along the way. 
This is why you are the guy to listen to, because not only do you know the strategies and the tips, but you sure know how to inspire and motivate and just make us feel like we can, we can all do it. So I'm sure everybody listening now is like, all right, here I go. So <laughs> but what do they do next? Huh? Where, I know you obviously we're going to talk about tribe here. Um, what's the next thing? What do you suggest anybody sitting here thinking I can do this? I can make this happen. What do you suggest they do? Well, I would encourage you first and foremost to come and join us for a free workshop that we're hosting on April 22nd. We do this one time a year and it's coming up. So I highly recommend you come and join us because in this, if you're thinking like, okay, Stu, uh, I like the sounds of a membership, but I don't know how it would fit with my market or you know what type of membership I should create. We're going to cover that. If you're thinking, okay, like, well, wait a minute, like, what do I actually provide inside the membership? We're going to cover that. If you're thinking like, how do I get new members? We're going to cover that. If you're thinking, how do I keep it? We're going to cover all these things and so much more. And not only that, but you're going to be inspired by all the different people and stories and different types of memberships that you're going to get exposed to. You're going to hear about product-based memberships. You're going to hear about service-based membership. You're going to hear about all kinds of knowledge-based memberships where people are taking what they already know, love, and do and turning it into a membership. And you're going to hear in uh, about memberships in all kinds of creative markets. You'll hear about memberships in all kinds of unique markets. You're like, you're going to think to yourself, I never even knew that was a thing. And trust me, in many of these markets, I didn't even know they were a thing either, but they are and they're thriving. They've got hundreds of members. Like, So you're going to be inspired and you're going to see what's possible. But most importantly, you're going to have the clarity of knowing how to move forward, no matter where you are on this journey. So if you're somebody who is in the very early stages and you've never had a business before, you're going to see your roadmap and you'll get clarity on that. If you're somebody who's been in business before and you're looking to add a membership to your product mix, you're going to see exactly how to do that. And if you're somebody who's already got a membership, you're going to hear all kinds of little nuances and tweaks. They're going to make a world of difference in the growth that you're going to experience in your membership. And so no matter where you are on this journey, I want you to come and join us. The workshop is 100% free. It all starts April 22nd. And last year when we did this, we did it for the first time ever live. And there was just something magical about it. Like the energy was there. And we saw during this free workshop, more people actually launched their membership during the free workshop than ever before. And I'm just telling you, gang, you can't help but get swept up in that positive momentum and and starting to do things that are going to move you forward. And that's what the whole workshop is about. So make sure you come and join us April 22nd. I'm sure you're going to hook them up with the link, right? Yeah, link will be in the show notes. And I mean, like, I, you're like, I don't know what fired them up. I'm like, I'm pretty sure you fired them up because we're all <laughs> like being swept along with you here, Stu. So great. So fire, so much fun. Yes, you guys will have to come. Um, you know, I, the founding member launch is was so much fun when I took part in it two years ago. Within seven days, I'd paid off my entire tribe investment, which was unbelievable. And so, and I had a very small audience and, and my membership still, it's chugging along. It's doing great. Um, but we haven't had, we haven't had a huge spike, but just even that initial start starting point was amazing and so exciting. And I agree with everything you just said there, like getting it started, coming on in, seeing where it can, whatever potential it has in your life and your business. Um, And I think the biggest problem people are probably going to have is picking just one membership because I know our audience likes to do all the things. So that'll probably be a question that comes up too, is how do I just pick the best one? Well, I I will help you stay disciplined in that because what I do know for sure is like trying to do multiple memberships simultaneously is a recipe for disaster. Now, it's not to say, by the way, that you can't have multiple memberships because I 100% uh, know that you can and we see that in our community, but it's very, very difficult to do multiple memberships uh, at the same time right from the get-go. Get one up and rocking and rolling and then that'll give you the space to create the second and third. So like we see it like um, this year uh, we saw, uh, you know, Heidi Easley, she launched a second membership site. We saw uh, Christy Hawkins launch a second membership site. We saw, you know, Casey uh, um, Hope launch a second. We saw Ashley Rich. She's got three membership sites now. Like definitely multiple membership sites are possible, but in every single one of those cases, they had their first membership up and established first before launching the second and third. So that's my job. My job is to help keep you focused. My job is to help keep you disciplined and on track uh, so that you do experience momentum and success no matter what path you want to take. 
And you're very good at it, so you're very, very good at it. Uh, Tribe is an amazing experience. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll link everything below here. Uh, before you go, I've got a couple of Golden Girls questions that I like to ask everybody. So I want to know, what's the big goal that you're working on right now? Oh, good question. Um, well, I've got goals like uh, for in all areas of my life, like from the business standpoint, uh, we have goals that we are working towards with the software side of our business. So I'm super excited about that. The The product is really coming together. And um, this is Searchy, so, right? Yes, Searchy. So I'm really, really excited. We love about- Searchy. Oh, sweet. Um, so yes, I've, I've got big goals around that. Uh, I've got goals, you know, for, you know, me personally, like in terms of my fitness. Um, so uh, I wear this this little band because I was supposed to go climb a mountain with my wife um, for my, uh, for my birthday, but because of COVID it, you know, was postponed. Um, but essentially it's a, it's, uh, it would be the equivalent of us climbing Mount Everest, like the, the same distance of that. So that's like a, a, on a personal side of things. And then we got goals as far as the charity, you know, this year's a, a big year for us. My wife has a, a book coming out in August called uh, passion to purpose and 100% of all the proceeds from the book are going to the charity. And our goal is uh, to build our first ever boarding school for girls. And it's a, our biggest, most ambitious project yet. Um, we're going to need certainly a lot of help. We're going to certainly need, you know, some support in that. Um, and so that's a big goal is to, to you know, uh, cross the finish line on uh, getting that uh, boarding school accomplished and, and built and finished. So those are some of the, the big goals this year. Wow. So cool. Okay. Well, I can't wait to check out Amy's book and to, to hear more about the school as you guys build it. Very cool. Um, what's the best thing that you learned in the last year? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot, but. <laughs> wow. In, in the last year, I would just say that um, I, I, I would probably say like uh, empathy is more important now than ever before. Um, we just, we just don't know what's going on behind the scenes in everybody's worlds, you know? Um, there's like the front stage and there's the backstage. And I just think that, you know, there's a lot going on for a lot of people in the backstage that none of us, you know, could ever understand or, um, even be able to relate to in many cases. And so I just think like the last year has really taught me, you know, how important empathy is and, um, and, and holding space for people, uh, and, and, you know, being supportive and being there and, and, you know, being a guide when they want a guide, but also, you know, uh, just, just holding space and being empathetic to, you know, uh, all the things that, uh, are happening. And I share that with you because, um, you know, a, few, a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was a tragic incident happen right near where we are staying. And, uh, it really rocked, you know, our world as a family. Like it was, it's literally about five minutes from where we're staying. And, uh, there was a a stabbing and this kind of thing just does not happen in this area ever. And it wasn't like a single stabbing, like, uh, um, six women, six women, uh, were stabbed. Uh, there was death and, uh, it just really hit home. And like the, the, the gentleman who, um, the man who did it was, um, he, he, he was struggling with a bunch of stuff right behind the scenes. And, and this is kind of what I'm saying is just, we just never know. We never know what's going on in people's lives. And I just think that, uh, that's what I've learned in this past year is just to be very empathetic and, um, and just to hold space for people. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You're talking about the Lynn Valley library stabbing. And I know there's going to be some people listening that are also in the community, in the neighborhood. Um, and our, our hearts go out to you guys. And um, there's a, a perfect place to hold space because it, it's such, it was such a tragedy and there it's happening all the time in everyone's lives. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, it really is. And you know, what I've, uh, what's just been so amazing is just watching the community rally together and, and support each other. And I think that it, it kind of speaks to, uh, how much we we need people. We need each other. You know what I mean? And uh, this is another part of, you know, not to bring it back to memberships, but this is another part of memberships that I think, you know, is important, is that community aspect. And, you know, even more so now because we feel disconnected because we haven't seen each other as much as we would like in person and we haven't been able to do the things that we want in person. Like that connection with people who are on a similar journey, who have shared interests, it's important. And, um, 
it's been beautiful to watch how this uh, this local community has really rallied together and uh, um, and really supported and helped each other. And, and I think you can see the parallels in, in other places of our lives too. Yeah, absolutely. I know for my community too, I was a little worried when the pandemic hit, but it's amazing how the connections have become more important than ever, more valuable than ever for everyone. And, uh, you know, where in the past, it would be kind of hard to get people to show up sometimes. it's People show up because they are just starving for that human connection. And it's created a way deeper community in my community, uh, but also retention and support network. And it's just way more powerful. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to line it up here with a a poutine question because you're Canadian. So you'll get this. Uh, are you a bigger fan of the cheese curds or the shredded cheese? Oh man. Well, 100% cheese curds. Uh, that's, that's, yeah. Home run. Thank you. Okay. You don't, our past guests have not gotten it. So I'm glad you're on the same page here. Oh my goodness. How could you have it with shredded cheese? That's like, uh, that's, I, that's not a poutine. Uh, I know it's sacrilege. I know, I know. But you know, I still, I still, they had, a, they are still great people. Except we just can't have poutine together. But <laughs> Stu, we can do it. We can do it. Bubble soccer and poutine. Um, nice. And last question: If you had a magic wand, what was the? What's the first thing you would do with it? Wow! If I had a magic wand, um, you know, I think that. Well, the first thing I would do, that would be the hardest choice. I, there's a whole bunch of things that I would do with this magic wand. Let me tell you. Um, and we can make top three if it's that easy. Okay, all right. Top three. All right. So uh, number one, I think, would be uh, related to my kids. And I'd, uh, I'd wave the wand and uh, to ensure that they grow up with the confidence and the capabilities to do the things that they love. You know, um, so if, if, if all else fails and, and that's all that the magic wand enables me to do, then that 100% is worth it in spades. Um, second thing, if I had a magic wand is that I would, Oh, my, my wife just said, she's like, end COVID. Um, so, okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Amy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. F- fair enough. That, 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 that's a good, uh, that's a good number two. Uh, number three would probably be, um, I, I think number three would be to, to really, um, inspire, you know, entrepreneurs to be able to make a lot of money. Um, and, and, and with that, the responsibility of, uh, in my opinion of using that money for good. Um, and, and I just think like at the end of the day, there's only so much that all of our governments are going to be able to do, um, but there's no limits on what we can do, you know, uh, as entrepreneurs. And, and that's a, that's just an incredible opportunity. And I just, I think of like Chuck Feeney who gave away $8 billion of his money. Uh, and, and, and I think of the impact that that one entrepreneur, that one entrepreneur has had on this world. Imagine what would be possible if the, thousands, tens of thousands, millions of us also had the ability to be able to make a lot of money and therefore contribute and give a lot of money. That would, you know, change the world. Um, so that would be my last one. It's just uh, inspiring others to be able to make a lot and give a lot. So cool. Well, I got to say, you know, I've gotten to see your kids at a couple events. We've been fans of the Cheeky Monkey Molly books. Uh, so I feel like you're doing a great job with your kiddos. They both seem super confident and uh, and just their own little personalities, big personalities, perhaps with Marla, especially. Um, and I know with this episode, Stu, and everything you do in Tribe, I, I see you. You inspire so many of us to to stop thinking about money as something we should be guilty of and see it as something that can give us real power and that the more money we have, the more impact we can make. And you're absolutely right. You know, it's, it's up to us to make the difference. And, and I know you've inspired people today. You're going to continue to do it with tribe year after year. And I'm just so grateful to have you here and grateful to know you. So thank you for being here, Stu. Thanks for all your wisdom. Um, I appreciate that. I really do. You know, I, I, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because like, I think in business and I'm sure you experienced it the same, you know, when, what you start out, you know, thinking, uh, your reasons why you're getting into this don't always necessarily be the end reason. You know, like for me, when I started on this entrepreneurial journey, I was just this, uh, kid in his twenties who just, uh, wanted to make a bunch of money and I didn't want to wear a suit and tie. I wanted, you know, freedom, you know, I, and, and that was, it was very much about me at that point. 
Um, but very soon, like things shift and in, in life. And I think certainly my world opened up tremendously, like uh, through the influence of my wife, you know, through the influence of, of my kids. And then, um, but I think in the last several years, the, the one thing that's just, um, you know, really always grounds me is like talking to the people that we get to serve and help and hearing the stories and it's the ripple effect. Like I, I am so attached and committed and obsessed around the ripple effect and I can be having the crappiest of days and then I go into our Slack channel that's called Tribe Kudos and I can just read through the stories of that day of people's wins and it immediately brings me back to why we do this. And I just, uh, I think for all of us as entrepreneurs, like really staying connected to the why is the thing that will always keep us motivated, will always keep us moving forward. And I just appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing. I appreciate you giving me the chance to share. And uh, I appreciate you being part of our community. Hmm. I'm just going to end on that. That's amazing. Thanks, Stu. So good. So yeah, good. Well, well, I appreciate you. I, I mean it. Like, thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, thank you for, you know, supporting, you know, all that you do in the community and elsewhere. It's, uh, you know, we don't take that for granted. Oh, thanks. Well, I really believe in it. I believe in what you do. I believe in tribe and, uh, it's, 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 it's so much fun. It's, it's a great time. And, uh, yeah. So thanks. Can I tell you a funny story? It's like slightly inappropriate, but also it's kids. Yeah. <laughs> so last year when it was struck. So, okay. So we have all the cheeky monkey Bali books and we've been reading them to my three-year-old since, you guys started creating the book. So a year and a half. And uh, last summer when, so she always looks at the kids. She always wants to see the picture of your family. And she's like, that's Stu, that's Amy, that's Marla, that's Sam. Like she just like wants, she just loves them. Um, and so last summer we were doing uh, Tribe Alive and I had, you were on the screen talking and she looks, she's like, that's Stu. And I'm like, yeah. And then she turns around and she goes, daddy, mommy's doing Stu. <laughs> 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 and so it's always been like our joke in our family because she knows she knows exactly when it's Stu or marla or sam but it was just it was such a like a cute like that's, kid that's thing too She's funny. Like, that's amazing yeah well i had um i gotta share this with you uh somebody sent me this text message um or uh hang on uh instagram message and it made me uh it made me laugh one second um here it is let me see here Okay, so this is from uh, Angelica, who's in the tribe community. She said, I have to tell you this. It was so funny and sweet. She said, I had a parent-teacher Zoom call the other day, and my son's teacher asked me what a triber was. Apparently, uh, he'd asked uh, my son, Elliot, who is seven, a few questions in preparation for this meeting. And when he asked him what he wants to be when he grows up, my son had said, I want to be a triber like Stu. Oh. And she said, <laughs> He's already stolen my we is greater than me hat. And I'm sure he's going to claim this lovely bag as well. Thanks again. <laughs> so <laughs> it's so funny, like the, the, the connection with kids. Um, yeah. But anyways, thank you for yeah. sharing. That's, that's They're so funny. I know. Like there's, I mean, that's not the ripple effect you're in, in the business of doing, but you certainly brought some good laughs to our family. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate all this. I know we went way over time. I'm sorry. I hope that was okay. Um, all good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Ah, that was so good. Wasn't it? Stu is a brilliant marketer and a good person, a good human. And I, I like good humans. I found myself throwing my hands up in the air for a lot of the episode, especially when he was talking about creating a business that supports your lifestyle and getting over the guilt of making money. I know that that is something that so many of us struggle with, the idea that we want to have wealth, we want to have a certain type of lifestyle, but the guilt that comes with it. And so that's one of my passions is to allow you to claim with conviction, with courage, with truth and alignment that if you truly want to live a certain life and it requires the money, that it's okay for you to do that. I know Stu's message on money gave me goosebumps and I'm guessing it maybe resonated for you as well. Let me also say this, if that triggered you in any way, it is a great opportunity to explore and find out what that's about. I have definitely found myself struggling with money conversations in the past. For me, I would say now my old money stories are fading for sure, but once in a while, believe me, something totally pops up new sometimes, and I always use it as a chance to explore. You know, what's that really about? What do I truly believe? 
what is the truth? Those good old questions. More often than not, I realize that my money stories come from a lot of things that I learned when I was growing up, the culture, the community, my parents, all of those things. Um, And as an adult, as where I am at in this phase of life, I am ready to step into figuring out what the beliefs that I want to hold that are going to align for the life I want to create. And I invite you to do the same. In full transparency, I am a proud partner and affiliate for Stu's course called Tribe, which we touched on a little bit in this episode. Transparency is important, and I want you to know that I value your trust and I don't take it lightly. I am going to be sharing links to Stu's workshop and Tribe when the registration opens. So if you would like to sign up, and if you decide to use my link to do that, I do get a commission and I appreciate it so much. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and in fact, you get some special bonuses. Now, April 22nd, Stu is hosting the first of three workshops you don't want to miss out, even if you just have some ideas, you don't know where to start. As Stu said, maybe you have a membership and you're trying to figure out how to grow it. Come on in and join the workshop. If you go to lisamishow.com forward slash tribe, you'll find all the relevant details there. Along with the workshop, I'm also creating a free pop-up Facebook group for us if you want to be a part of it. I'm going to be joining in on all the workshops and I'm also going to host three free mastermind calls to brainstorm and help get you started in creating a profitable membership within your business. So that's all for free, absolutely free. Um, I'll drop the link for the Facebook group below. And of course, lisamishow.com forward slash tribe is where you're going to find the links to join. When tribe actually opens, if you decide to join, I would love it if you use my link. And if you do, we're going to have special bonuses for you there too, including a behind the scenes tour of Golden Girls community, a one-on-one brainstorming session with me about your membership, plus three months in the communities to see how we do things and get our support with your goals. In the meantime, keep your eye on my social media at The Lisa Me Show and your inbox if you're on our list. And if you're not, my friend, get on there and you'll get the link to join with all of our special bonuses. Honestly, whether you join Tribe or not, I really hope that you join the free workshop that Stu is hosting. And I know you'll be inspired and learn even more than you have from this episode. So go ahead, save your spot. Link is in the show notes. Now, I promised you I'd show you some of the biggest things that I've learned in the almost two years of having a membership. And here are a few of my biggest things. Some of them we already touched on with Stu, but I'm going to I'm gonna bring it, bring it all home. So the first thing is I would completely agree. Stu says the only way to get started is to get started. Absolutely. Honestly, the only way to perfect something is to actually start it. And as a recovering perfectionist, <laughs> if I hadn't done a founding member launch and just gone for it, I'd probably still be planning. I wholeheartedly agree with Stu when he says that the best lessons and iterations come from actually doing. That's what I learned. The best things came from me actually getting started, from me having some members to start with, figuring out what worked, what didn't. Trust me, a lot of it didn't. (laughs) And actually interacting with my members. Now I know what works, what doesn't. And we focus on the things that really work and help get our members support and give them what they're looking for. So I would say if you're holding off, the best thing I can say is to do a founding members launch. And I know Sue's going to talk about it more in the workshop, but just getting started was the best thing that I did. And it's the best thing you can do too. Here is another thing that I've learned in the last couple years. Stu always says people come for the content, but they stay for the community. I kind of sort of maybe believed this in the beginning, but now I think this is true more than ever. The more opportunities that I've been able to create for people to join live and build relationships and connect to each other, the better. And I don't just mean better because they stick around longer, but I mean better because they get results, because they create real genuine connections. And right now, as you know, April 2021, in the middle of COVID, I hope it's the end, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what's happening. So maybe the end, maybe the beginning, who knows? My point is that I really think that people value connection more than ever. And so if you can create opportunities for people to join in, that makes such a difference. And community is so valuable. Okay, here's a couple other little things. Uh, for my membership, one of the best things I did last year was I switched from a monthly membership to quarterly membership and I raised the prices. You might be thinking, well, that's just a good decision because you raise the prices, but it's it's not. <laughs> From a business perspective, it was probably actually smarter to keep things monthly. What happened is people tended to not notice the smaller dollar figure coming out every month. And I think some people actually stayed longer than they probably would have had it been a big chunk of money. 
But I'm not here to just make money. I'm here to make an impact, and that is the longer-term vision. For my business to be successful in the long term, for me to still have a platform, for me to still have this podcast or to do anything cool, really, my clients have to be successful too. And if they're not successful, if you're not getting value from these episodes, nothing works, and especially in a membership. If they're not having success, it doesn't continue. It sounds counterintuitive, but charging more and making people commit for longer actually changed the game. Our membership is not huge yet, but the women that are in there are so committed. They show up to more of the events. They do the work. They ask questions. They build relationships. They answer the survey. They make progress and they get results. That's what it's all about. They support each other and that is the most incredible thing. I guess the lesson here is don't be afraid to charge a higher price if you're able to back it up. In some cases, I believe it'll actually help encourage you people to take your product seriously, to use it, and make progress. I also think the difference in switching from quarterly to, sorry, from monthly to quarterly made a big difference because people actually had to commit for a certain amount of time. They couldn't just come in and hope that they would get results by not doing anything. So when people have to sign up for a quarter, they actually have to think about it, think about the investment more than just a $9.99 or, you know, a $29 membership. They actually have to think about an investment that's, uh, $179 $179 last time we opened and probably going up to $199 or more next time. So I just found that people's commitment levels are totally different when we go quarterly. And sure, there's probably a lot of people that don't join or maybe don't join because of that because they're nervous. But I want people who are committed. I want people who are there to do the work, to get the results that we can support and really change our lives. So I guess higher prices, if you can back it up, is good. And commitment is not a bad, not a dirty word. <laughs> All right, another couple little things I want to say about the membership. It's not a get-rich-quick thing. To do it well, it takes time, it takes energy and intention. But if you don't start, you will never get it going. It's been almost two years of building it and creating it, but it's so, so, so worth it. We've been able to do it piece by piece. And I think any of the good things that you create in your life, they do take time, and a membership is definitely one of them. And what I will say is, again, not a quick get-rich-quick scheme, but it's been enough to really keep my business going and steady and at least cover some of the basic expenses and not have to worry and relaunch all of the time. The women in the community, I mean, like, they're obviously the best part. I love, absolutely love getting to do the work that we're doing with them. But you know, regardless of how hard it is, regardless of the challenges, it, it does take time, but it's so worth it. Okay, one last little thing that really surprised me about having a membership – I gotta say, once you get started, your clients become your best resource ever. I get ideas for content, for podcast episodes, for freebies, for products and and other offerings because I have a membership. It helps me understand in real time what my ideal clients are experiencing and that is priceless. It's one of the reasons I still keep the price point quite accessible because it feels like such a win-win for everyone. So if I haven't convinced you yet... (laughs) Memberships are and subscriptions are one way that in your business, in your life, you can create recurring revenue. And when you have recurring revenue, you take yourself off the hamster wheel of constantly having to create and launch and relaunch and wondering where your next client contract or paycheck is going to come from. It may not be a get-rich-quick thing. It certainly hasn't been for me, but it's been one of the most rewarding experiences in my business. It's one of the things that I'm the most proud of is our Golden Girls community, and I know that it's really just getting started. My friend, if you also have a membership in your heart, if you have an idea, or maybe five, <laughs> Stu will help you work through those and pick the right one, then I invite you to come join in on Stu's live workshop, April 22nd, and heck, maybe even in, join in on the FML. I'm talking about a founding member's lunch. All right. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Golden Girls Podcast, and I will see you in the workshop. Thank you so much for listening. If something spoke to you, send me a message by sharing this episode and tagging me on social media. If you know someone who would love to hear this episode, please share it with them too. Because I love surprises, make sure you subscribe to the Golden Girls Podcast today. It's the only way to find out about bonus surprise episodes and make sure you don't miss a single beat on your golden journey. Thanks again for listening, and I will talk to you in the next episode of the Golden Girls Podcast.